Hello everyone, welcome to episode 5 of my Robinhood portfolio. And as you can see, my Robinhood portfolio has spiked up quite a bit. Um, right now, I did, it wasn't a really good day, minus $58, but um, I'm doing, um, I have at a $2 increase in the after hours, and um, I figured I just wanted to hurry up and just go over through my portfolio, just uh, show you guys how the market's been treating me and this and that. Um, like I said in my uh, last episode, I didn't really want to make any changes, but but um, I made it, I didn't I make just a tiny bit of changes or maybe you might uh, look at it and say oh he made a lot of changes or something else like that but uh, um, what for me all I'm trying to do is just keep getting money just keep keep this thing rolling just keep trying to trying to invest in stocks that uh, I believe have good balance sheets good uh, good you know solid reports um, solid uh, earnings solid dividends and growth and um like i like i said i just uh, i'm just trying to keep this thing rolling i'm not an expert i've made plenty of mistakes in this in this market where i've i've lost tons of money i've 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 sold low when i, I remember when i was starting out i um i was with uh stash invest and this is not the the bash them or any or or anything because uh like i said i um i i, I right now i have robin hood and m1 finance as my primary investment accounts uh, or in in a sense, you can say that that was my re re retirement account with M1 Finance. But, you know, Stash Invest, they taught me a lot of things about the market in general and, you know, what time the market opened up. I didn't know nothing, guys. I didn't know I didn't know what time the market opened up. I didn't know what was going on. And as soon as I got to the Robinhood platform, that made it even worse because, uh, I, you know, the, the Robinhood platform doesn't really explain things all that well. They just kind of throw you into this into into the stock market world and they're like good luck but um you know i i had came from stash invest all the way into Robinhood, and i think that really helped me just to see you know what what to buy like what's what what are good stocks what are good blue chip stocks to, to invest in and um you know what's overvalued what's a pe ratio what what are uh what are volumes what what kind of volume is in a stock or something like that and um it just taught me a lot and um i just um the reason why i quit stash invest is because i just didn't want to get hit with any more fees i thought that um the just trying to build up my my portfolio on stash invest would be quite difficult if i was paying a dollar per month which would which would equal out to twelve dollars per month, and it would just take a a, bit, a good chunk out of that portfolio. So I just wanted to go with something like a something free, something that was like an M1 finance where I can buy just fractional shares or something. And uh, um, I'm just going to jump right into this per, into my Robinhood portfolio episode five. Uh, earnings season, uh, earnings, a lot of earnings for these companies are coming up. I think banks had. Uh, a lot of earnings reports for banks came out. I think uh, J.P. Morgan, Wells Fargo, um, a lot of banks tanked today. I guess uh, investors weren't too excited about what what the what the banks had posted. But you know, this is just another buying opportunity, and uh, I'm gonna just keep I'm gonna keep going at it. So, like I said, uh, I did make a, a quite a, just a little bit of changes. Uh, I know I talked about how every portfolio needs Amazon and this and that, but um, I, you know, I, I have two accounts, so. I ended up selling that ETF that I think it was called XYL or, or, or XLY or something like that. It was a consumer discretionary ETF. And I think what I'm going to do is I might put Amazon in my M1 finance account. I'm not really sure yet. I know I've talked about Amazon. I'm really bullish on these e-commerce stocks. I, I still believe that, every, you know, if you have the money to, to get an Amazon and if they're, if, if they're on a really good dip, I say go for it. But um, right now, I'm really trying to do some stuff with my Robinhood portfolio. And I I'll focus on my M1 finance account um, later on. I, I've actually changed my M1 finance account a little bit too. So um, we're just going to jump into these stocks. Um, we, as you can see, there have been some changes here. There's been a lot of, well, uh, maybe not a lot of changes, but um, we're going to go ahead and jump into Apple, solid blue chip stock. I'm going to really just run through these right quick because I already had Apple before. I'm up $20. Um, I'm really waiting for a dip for them because uh, I'm, I'm waiting for uh, when, when this stock drops back all the way back to about $150 or $159. That's when I'm going to buy into Apple. Solid blue chip stock doesn't need no explanation. Uh, I, I got This is my new stock. I ended up buying it today, Cisco. I thought they were at a really good buying point despite going up just a little bit. I kind of jumped in late a little bit, but I wish I would have bought it sometime at these buying points. As, I, as you can see here, minus 10%. 
and minus 10% again on April 6th. April 6th. So that was a good, really good time to buy in. And uh, I ended up buying a little, a little bit late, but that's okay. I think Cisco is a great stock. I'm up on them already. So it still ended up being a good buy, and I'm just going to add to my shares uh, if this stock keeps going down. So the the thing the reason why I bought Cisco is because I just I, for I had AT and T but AT and T was just not growing I didn't I ended up capturing AT and T's dividend and I ended up uh, taking that money out and putting into Cisco and as you and as, if you look at the chart this is growth and a five year growth chart where for the last five years it's been growing and it's been paying out dividends so um, I needed a, a a sort of telecommunication stock. And or just just a communication stock in general. And I thought about Cisco and, you know, they kind of specialize in those routers and communication. So it made sense. They they're they're a tech stock. But, you know, my text, my, my portfolio might be a little bit tech heavy, but I got some solid companies that aren't going anywhere. I'm not really too worried about that. Microsoft is the next stock. Uh, I'm up big on them. They've been kind of the market has been volatile. It's just been all over the place. But I'm up seventeen dollars. Blue chip stock again, like Apple. I don't have to say much about them. Um, if they keep if they dip again, I'm just going to buy more. I've, I've been buying more, so um, that's a, that, that's good. Uh, a new stock in my portfolio is Intel, and um, the reason why I bought Intel is because I just like I just like those chips that they make, and uh, I think they have a really good P/E ratio and a really good dividend. Solid market cap, solid report. It's a blue chip stock. I know a lot of people can go for, go for Nvidia as, as their AI play, and I actually had a ETF called Bots in this per, in my Robinhood portfolio for the last couple of days, but I sold it today. And I'm just gonna I think I'm just gonna stick with Intel. I like Intel a lot. Um, they're, they're cheap. Um, they they I, I'm up really big on. I think I was up at like seventy three dollars yesterday, but um, I'm just gonna keep adding to my shares. They pay a great dividend. I like Intel a lot, and um, you know, Apple Apple kind of handles the hardware hardware of my tech stocks. Intel handles the um, sort of like the chips, uh, AI, some sort of AI play, and uh, Microsoft handles the technology. So um, that's kind of like my tech block. And I guess when you I, I added Cisco today, so that's just more hardware added added into the into the mix. Next stock I'm talking about is Bank of America. I was really up on them. They had a, a bad day, so I'm kind of just down right now but they've been bouncing back they have an earnings report coming out on monday i think they're going to beat it i think they're going to be in earnings the stock is i think the stock is a little bit undervalued the, the p ratio is low i think that they have a lot more room to grow and um i do like these little i like these plays where uh stocks are growing and they're paying dividends along the way i think that's a solid choice a solid bank i know i went with jp morgan i still think jp morgan is a better bank than bank of america but hey guys look don't sleep on bank of america they are great this is a great stock it's cheap you can get in with a lot of shares I'm, i bought 30 shares of this stock so i'm not going to sell these shares i'm just going to be averaging down my position uh the next stock i want to talk about is uh pfizer sort of my healthcare play not much to say about them again i am really up on them 45 dollars um if it dips if like i said guys I, tr I try to buy the dips if it if the stock dips i just buy more and uh market cap looks good a low pe ratio one of the one of, one of the lower health pe ratios that i've seen solid reports uh, they have a report coming up it's really it's earning season a lot of these earnings reports for these companies are going to come out and a lot of a lot of investors are just going to look at how the companies have been doing but uh i'm in some these are blue chip stocks all my my whole portfolio is, is blue chip stocks i really like what i'm seeing uh the next stock I'm talking about is my energy stock this is a new a new stock that i added in my portfolio today valerio and uh I've been really on a tear lately. Uh, I got in at $100, probably a little bit late. I have bought this stock uh, like around $91. I'm not sure why I didn't hold it, but uh, um, Valero is really good. It's a really good energy corporation. They, they have excellent reports. They have excellent growth. Uh, I like the stock. I like the, I like it. They have it has a really low PE ratio, a solid dividend choice. This is a good stock. I think it's one of the one of the better energy stocks on the market, in my opinion. Uh, next stock I want to talk about is Boeing Airlines. Um, Boeing has just been up and down. I don't know. I mean, if you look at the graph, look at this graph. 
There's, there's so many like mountains and peaks and valleys here. It, it just looks like I'm, it looks like I'm staring into the sunset. With, with if there was like a sun up here, then it would make a perfect picture for like a background. Because look at these peaks and valleys here. Look at this up, down, up, down, up, down. It's just been affected by so much news. I'm never selling these shares. Um, I think I got in at a great average cost. I think it was like two eighty seven. They have a uh, they have a um, earnings report coming up. I don't think they're going to do well on it because the stock has just been all over the place. And I don't, I, I really don't know the mark. You can't, you can never time the market. You can't say the market is going to do well because, and then it actually ends up doing, it ends up doing better. I really don't know about these things, but what I can tell you is that I'm never selling Boeing at, at an average cost of 287 and a total return of 14%. <laughs> that I'm not selling. I'm not selling Boeing. It doesn't matter if this stock goes back down to my average cost. I'm just going to buy more of it. Uh, next uh, stock I want to talk about is Next Area Energy. I really this is probably one of the better utility stocks on the market. Great PE ratio, great dividend yield. I really like them. Like I said, I'm just really quickly going over what these stocks are doing. Solid. Uh, growth. I think they really had a good month, and uh, I think they're going to beat their earnings. Uh, the next stock I want to talk about is McDonald's, another blue chip stock. I think I'm really up on them. Bought in at 151. Could have got in lower than that, but um, solid reports. Just another blue chip stock. Not too concerned about them. Letting McDonald's roll do its thing. Uh, the next stock I want to talk about is uh, Visa. This is a new stock that I put in my portfolio, and. Uh, I have PayPal here. I got rid of PayPal. Like I said, I did minor changes. I got rid of PayPal and I put in Visa. If you look at the market cap, if you look at the reports, just solid all around. I, I captured a dividend there on a, um, at on March 6th, but uh, I've been in and out of Visa. I know I have Mastercard for a minute there. So Visa or Mastercard, you can't go wrong with you can't go wrong with both of them. Really, I think that Visa is a good play. It's a great growth stock. I know the dividend doesn't look uh, all that attractive, but they will increase their dividend because this this company makes knows how to make money. This Visa knows how to make money. They're established. They're they're all over the world. I, I every car, every debit credit card that I have that I own has a Visa logo on it. That's why I bought them. I like Visa. Uh, the next stock that I'm quickly going through this portfolio that I'm going to talk about is uh, Procter & Gamble. Got in on a really good average cost with them. And uh, I know a lot of people are, have really been bashing Procter & Gamble because they have not had a solid couple of months. Uh, the last three months down almost 12%. But th this is a buying opportunity. This is a buyer buying opportunity. They, they are a dividend king. Uh, they have an excellent dividend yield. They have solid according to the according to the reports they look very solid uh i just i just think that this is a great average cost this is an excellent time to buy in into into this company when when stocks go down and bad news about a stock comes out you need to get some more money into the market so you can buy up these dips and that's how that's the only that's how you, that's how you're going to grow your portfolio a lot of people they just put money in for that that first time and they don't they don't put no more money into their into their accounts they just think that they can turn a hundred dollars into a million dollars and you know i'm not saying that that's not possible that's not they, that they can't do it but um what i believe in what i believe is that you 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 it's it's unrealistic it's it's unrealistic you, like you, I, i'm not saying that it's not it's not possible but i just think that you have to keep putting money into your account you have to let your money work for you you have to just keep investing money. This is what I've been doing. I've been, I've, I've been, I kept on investing money, more money into my portfolio. I'm not stopping to ju just at a certain amount because I, I, I have to buy up these discs. When, when, when this is a great buying opportunity, and it'll probably never be seventy eight dollars again or something like that. You look at 2015, dipped all the way down to about sixty three dollars. That's where you want to buy. That that this is a buying point right here. This is a buying point. So this is how you're supposed to treat stocks. Get some more money into the market and buy up these dips. Uh, quickly here, I'm going to talk about uh, next sort of. This is an ETF, the the uh, the Dow Industrial Jones Average ETF. A lot of solid holdings in this ETF. I think they hold like the higher. The higher end of the Dow Jones stocks, uh, you know, I think for this portfolio weight, I think like there's a lot of Boeing, there's a lot of Home Depot in here, just off the top of my head. The reason why I bought this is because, you know, I wanted something to just track the, the Dow Jones average. Uh, 
uh, I already have I, most of my stocks already follow the Dow Jones anyway, but this pays monthly. And I, if you look at uh, S and PhD, which is another ETF that I have that pays monthly, I have two ETFs that would pay me monthly payouts. So um, I really bought this at a great dip. I bought it right in there, I think. Right in there for SPHD, a solid return of fifteen dollars. Uh, this is a great. A, a, this was a great buy. I know they they got a dividend, uh, a dividend payout coming out because they pay. Like I said, SPHD pays monthly. They pay monthly, and what I, and what I wanted to do is just get Dia into my portfolio. I know they're really bit high, and I know I'm down two dollars, but. <clears throat> They pay monthly. This this stock pays monthly, and uh, it's one of the better ETFs on the market that pays monthly. I know it's very expensive. I only have three shares, but it tracks the Dow Jones very well, and I think SPHD tracks the S&P 500 very well. So, guys, that's going to wrap it up. I know I quickly talked about what's been going on with my portfolio, what I've been doing, and how I'm trying to go about playing, playing out this volatile market, but... Um, yeah, this is how this is how you have to play the market when the when the market's going up, when the market's going down, and when the market's all over the place. You can't just sit on, you know, a thousand dollars. You just can't sit on two thousand dollars. You got to put more money into your account, and you have to buy up these dips. When stocks go on sell, five percent, ten percent. When I think uh, lows, fifteen percent. You got to buy in, and uh, I just want to talk about um, bots for a minute here because I actually had them in my portfolio. I had them in my portfolio. I sold them today, and the reason the reason why I sold bots is because I I still think this is a good ETF. This is a great ETF, but I'm real, what I'm not a fan of is that high PE ratio. Um, the PE ratio is very high, and um, I know this holds a lot of Nvidia in its portfolio way, but I mean I would rather I could I would rather just buy Nvidia instead of having to deal with all the other stocks. In, uh, into this ETF, if, if you're if you're into AI, if you're into robots, which I think will be a big thing going on into the future, then I think that this this stock, this I mean, excuse me, this ETF would be great for you. You can it's really on a great buying point, and this is the reason why I bought them. I bought them when they were somewhere right here, somewhere in this area right here, and they were down nine percent. This stock was really going down. This stock was really getting hit hard. So. Um, you know, like I said, if you want to, if you think that this, if bots is the future of, if you think robots and you, they're 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 starting to make the robots, uh, like on the movie I Robot with, I think it was Will Smith played in it, but there's that's how they want their robots. That's how that's how robots in the world are gonna be, and. Uh, you know, you can you want to get on that train early. You want to get on that train early, and you want to ride that train up and and you know sell sell off your shares at you know two thousand dollars or something like that. But you know that's going to cut it, guys. Uh, I, I don't have, just let me if you want to comment. You know, comment just to see what what I've been doing. How 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 am I playing out this portfolio? This portfolio is almost a ten ten thousand uh, dollars. I'm not. I'm not going to stop there. I'm not going to stop at just ten thousand dollars. I'm going to keep doing this until, you know, I I feel like, you know, it's going to until until maybe for years. You know, maybe five years, maybe ten years. Yeah, let's 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 go there, man. Let's let's try to get this to like a uh, hundred a hundred a hundred thousand uh, dollars. You know, I I think that, you know, the way I'm going, I, I'm I'm I got some good stocks here, and uh, if I just sit on this for the next couple of years and I just keep putting in money, yeah, it, it, it could be a possibility. It, it, could, it could very well be a possibility. So, you know, let me know what you guys think or comment or what have you. And thanks for watching, guys. Talk to you later.